Okay, here's your MDI. Um, go ahead and pause for a couple of minutes and give yourself a little bit of time to work on it. All right, first thing we need to do when we're constructing an angle is we need to draw a ray. And it doesn't matter how you draw your ray, it can be straight across it, it can be tilted. But the second thing that we need to do is we need a protractor. I don't see my protractor up here. So we're going to get a protractor up here. Now we're going to take this protractor, and remember, when you guys use your protractor, don't ever measure, measure from the middle part of your protractor. Always set it along the bottom edge, okay? So your little guy that looks like this, okay? This is always the part that you should put at the corner of your angle. You should never put this part up here, always the bottom part. All right, we want an angle that's 72 degrees. That's acute, so that means that we're going to go this way because this is the direction our ray is pointing. So we're going to go in this direction and we're going to look for 72. We know that 72 is between 70 and 80. So here's 70, 71, 72. We're going to put a little point where it says 72. And then all we have to do is get our straight edge out. And we're going to set this up. So that we've got our two points. And then you just draw your line. And you can draw your line past that. You don't have to draw it exactly to it. And then your last step is that you should have a little arrow at the end. So there's your 72 degree angle. So from here to here. 72 degrees. All right, you guys are going to have to bear with me a little bit today because um, I'm having to do this all electronically. So today, this should go into your notes. So today is September 12th. So remember to put the section, the title, and the learning goal into your notes. Today, the one that we're going to be focusing on is perpendicular bisectors. So if you just want to put that part of the learning goal in, that's fine. Okay, so a couple of terms that we need to know before we can go any farther is that we need to know what a midpoint is, and we need to know what a perpendicular bisector is. So a midpoint is a point on a line segment that's halfway between the two endpoints. So this little dot right here would represent a, mid, a midpoint because this distance right here and this distance right here are the same. So this is halfway between this endpoint here and this endpoint right here. A perpendicular bisector is a line that's perpendicular to the segment at the segment's midpoint. Okay, so both of these two things have to be true. It's got to be perpendicular to the segment and it has to go through the segment's midpoint. So when you draw the line here, again, in order to show that it's perpendicular, remember you need to have that little square in the corner there. So if you need to pause so you can get these two definitions down, that's fine. Okay, so the perpendicular bisector theorem says each point on the perpendicular bisector of a segment is equidistant from the two endpoints. So no matter what point we pick on this perpendicular bisector, it's always going to be the same distance from B as it is from A. So if we were to take a ruler and we were to measure the distance from C to A, it would be the same as the distance from C to B. And likewise, if we picked a point down here and we called it Z, point Z would be the same distance from point A as it would be from point to point B. And again, even if we pick this one right here, it's the same distance from A as it is from B. And even if we chose one all the way down here, this point down here would be the same distance from A as it is from B. So no matter what point you choose on this line, it's always going to be the same distance between A and B. 
these little marks right here, those are little hash marks, and we put those to show that this distance here has the same distance as this here. And we just say CA is equal to CB, and we can also say DA, which this is D right here, DA is equal to DB. Okay, so CA is equal to CB, and DA is equal to DB. And this is going to come in handy when we're talking about triangles later on in the year. So this is a really important theorem to have down. Okay, so here's our example. I would maybe suggest writing down these steps. Okay, so the very first thing that you want to do on your paper is you're going to want to create a line segment. And I would say, don't use a ruler, but use one of the blue lines on your paper and just put a couple of endpoints on there. Okay, you can label them A and B. So everybody should have a compass. Some of you guys have compasses that have two pencils in them. Use one as the point and one of them as the pencil. Okay, so here's step one. You want to open your compass so that it's a little bit more than half, halfway the distance between A and B. So what you want to do is you want to open up your compass, and I'm going to put mine up here so that you guys can see what I'm doing too, okay? <clears throat> okay, you're going to take your compass and you're going to put the point on A. You can start with B, that's fine too. But you're going to open up your compass so that it's more than halfway the distance between A and B, okay? If you do it shorter than the distance or right at the distance, it's not going to work. So it's really important that you open it more than halfway. <clears throat> okay. Second step is that you're going to put your pointer on A and you're going to draw a little arc above and below. but you're just going to swing an arc, okay? And you want your arc to go above and you want your arc to go below. Now, do not change the setting of your compass. Keep it the same distance that you have it right now. If you don't keep it the same, it's not going to work, okay? So keep that, keep that distance between the two the same. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take this pointer and now you're just going to flip it over and put it on B and do the same thing. So I'm going to do that over here. I'm leaving the compass the same distance. I'm not changing that distance, okay? same thing. I'm going to swing an arc just like this. All right, step three is we need to mark where those lines intersect at the top and at the bottom. So we need to mark where they intersect at the top and we need to mark where they intersect at the bottom. And this might take a little bit of practice, so if you need some more practice, don't worry about it, okay? And then what you're going to do is you're going to take your straight edge and you're just going to connect those two points up and down. Mine doesn't want to go to exactly 90 degrees. you have to do is just create that line. Mine's a little bit off, but once you're done with that, you're going to put your little square in the corner and you're going to mark each one of these to show that this is a 90 degree angle right here and you're going to show that this right here is the same distance as this right here. 
right? So that's step four. <clears throat> now, take your ruler, and you're going to go from A to your perpendicular bisector, and write down that distance. And then you're going to take your ruler, and you're going to measure the distance between your perpendicular bisector and B. Okay, so if I take this and I put it on here, okay, from here to here, well, let's turn it around so we're talking millimeters, those are easier to count. Okay, if we put it on there, this is about 65 millimeters over here. And from 65 to here, this should be about another 65 millimeters altogether. It should be around, and mine is just a little bit off, if you remember. So we're pretty close. Okay, so why don't you take about a minute, maybe two, pause the video, draw a different length of line segment, so create another line segment, okay? and practice your perpendicular bisector one more time. Remember, step one is make sure that your compass is open a little bit more than halfway, and you're gonna draw an arc from the top to the bottom. Step two is that you're gonna do that from the other side. So if you had your pointer on the, on the left end point, flip it around and do it from the right end point without changing the setting on your compass. Step three is to mark the intersection of your two points and draw the line. And then your last step is to measure the distance from endpoint to perpendicular bisector and from endpoint to, perp from endpoint to perpendicular bisector. Okay. Next thing we want to talk about is concurrent lines. Concurrent lines are three or more lines that meet or intersect at one point. So if we look at these three lines right here, so here's line L, line M, and line N, those three are concurrent because they meet at one point. These three lines would not be concurrent because they do not meet in one point, okay? All right, this triangle looks a little bit messy, but what this is saying is that in any triangle, the perpendicular bisectors of each side are concurrent. So if we do this correctly, if we find the perpendicular bisector of AC, of CB, and of BA, what should happen is they should all meet at the same point in the center. And then what that does is if we take our compass and we put the pointer here and an edge here, we should be able to create a circle that touches all three points of that triangle. Okay, and this point right here, I'm gonna back up just a little bit, okay? This point right here, this is called the circumcenter, okay? The circumcenter is the point where all the perpendicular bisectors of the triangle meet, okay? So what we wanna do now is we wanna use a straight edge to create a triangle. So in your notes, what I want you guys to do is create a triangle, use your straight edge, make it fairly big, because the smaller it is, the harder it is going to be to do this, okay? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the perpendicular bisector of each one of these three sides to find the circumcenter. All right, so let's start with our compass. Please, Lindell Martin to the main office. Thank you. Sorry. Okay, so we're going to be working with this side right here. Okay, and this is this part gets a little bit tricky, so you have to be really careful. You're going to put your pointer at one side of the triangle, and you're going to swing your arc. Okay. Now I'm going to start up above here because I don't want a whole bunch of 
mess all over. So I'm just going to make this kind of like this. And then I'm going to go down here. And I'm going to do kind of the same thing. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take this and without changing the size of your compass, you're going to turn it around and put it on the other end of that same line. And we're going to go up here. Oops. obviously done something wrong. I just didn't make my line long enough. So we're going to go back and redo that. All I have to do is just reflect it, slide this over, and make my line a little bit longer. So I have one point right here, and I have one point right here where those two lines intersect, and now we need to get our straight edge out. And we're just going to turn this, and we're going to make our perpendicular bisect. is the perpendicular bisector of this side right here, okay? So then what we're going to do is we are going to find the perpendicular bisector of our other two sides. Okay, make sure that your compass is over half the distance. changing the size of your compass, you're going to move it. So right here. Right here. And I just need to make that line a little bit longer up on top. So I'm just going to unreflect it or reflect it. Once we have those two points, oops, once we have those two points, those are, that's going to create our next perpendicular bisector, and that's from this side right here. So take your straight edge, match up those two points. got the third one. So we have side three. So we're going to start with our protractor with our compass. We need this to be over halfway. So make sure that your compass is over halfway otherwise it's not going to work. Okay. All right. I'm just going to make one big line like this. I'm going to move it back. I'm going to reflect it. And again, I'm not changing the measure of this compass. 
So now I've got this point right here and this point right here. Now, if I've done this correctly, which hopefully I have, and even if I haven't, hopefully you have, what should happen is that all three of these lines should go through that circumcenter that we have, that already have the two points going through it. This ruler is driving me nuts. Okay. So right there. And that perpendicular bisector can swing a little bit. So really what we've done is we've got this point here. Now, if we were to take our compass And we put the point of our compass right on that circumcenter, so right where all three of those lines intersect, and put it on one of the corners of this triangle. And what should happen is the circle should touch all three points of your triangle. Okay, so yes, a little bit messy, but you should be able to see that perpendicular bisector of this side, perpendicular bisector of this side, perpendicular bisector of this side. Okay? And that's just showing the circle circumscribes the triangle. Okay? There's different types of circumcenters depending on what kind of triangle you have. Sometimes your circumcenter can be right on the on one side of the triangle, and this is usually if you have a right angle. So this right here is your right angle. If you have an obtuse triangle, your circumcenter can be outside of the triangle. And if you have an acute triangle, your circumcenter will be inside. So this is acute. Okay? All right, we're not going to do the exit slip today. We're not going to do the extra practice, but you guys are going to do the perpendicular bisector constructions worksheet.